Hello everyone, welcome to one more episode of Shield Classroom. My name is Ram and I'm a cybersecurity specialist here at Manage Engine. In today's episode, as you can see, we'll be talking about automated incident response. Now, this is a very, very critical capability to have in any effective SIM solution, and we'll be going over why that is so. Now, when it comes to automated incident response, there are a few critical elements that you've got to keep in mind. As you can see here, uh, an, an automated incident response mechanism is going to help you create a correlation rule. Now, there could be several different events happening in a network, and all of these events, if taken in an isolated fashion may or may not be malicious, right? But then if you try to put all of these events together, that could be indicative of a malicious pattern. So it is those things that we are trying to look at when creating a correlation rule. When you create a correlation rule, you're looking for specific things that are of concern in your environment, and then you can associate that correlation rule to an alert. So whenever those patterns are seen within your network, it automatically becomes an alert for you. So that is what this is actually. So you have a correlation rule, or rather you write a correlation rule, and whenever that particular pattern is seen within your network, it creates an alert for you, and you get visibility into that happening. I'll give you an example. Let's say that there are three discrete events that happen. Now, we can take the example of a failed password change, um, you know, which is happening in quick succession. And we'll say that, you know, Whenever three of those events are seen, that is going to trigger a correlation rule. Now, that in turn is going to trigger one alert, right? So three discrete events that creates one correlation or that triggers one correlation rule. And this correlation rule is in turn creating an alert for you, which is going to be available in your SIM solutions alerting dashboard. From there, what you can then do is create a custom workflow. A custom workflow is nothing but a response, your response to this particular alert that has been triggered. So for example, the user who's associated with this particular alert, the user account, that could be logged off, or that user account could be disabled. The system that is involved here could be shut down. So these are things that you can actually configure within a custom workflow. And this custom workflow will run as soon as this alert is triggered, which is in turn triggered when these three things are seen, right? So that's how this, this entire thing kind of flows together. Now this is the automation piece, right? Now, as your, as your workflow is happening, this is your response, right? There is one more thing that you could do. So you can actually have this alert become an incident as well by writing an incident rule. So that's what we are doing over here you're con actually configuring an incident rule. And this incident rule can be either just one alert or it could be multiple alerts. And this could be completely automated. So you can actually write a rule saying that whenever alerts of a particular kind are seen, so let's say that this is an alert of a particular kind, you can write a rule saying that your SIM solution has got to create an incident out of it. So an incident could be just one alert or it could be multiple alerts logically put together. Right? So that is what uh, configuring an incident rule is all about. Now, when you do this, you can do several other things. Right? First of all, this will help with collaboration. Right? It's going to help your security analysts collaborate better. So in case there is more than one analyst who is working on a particular incident, they can write notes. And the second security analyst who is going to work on the same incident a little later does not have to start from scratch. They can actually look at the notes, they can get some context uh, going, and they can actually manage this, uh, the, alert in a, uh, the alert as well as the incident in a better sort of a way. The second thing is, you can also take a look at the status. So is the incident actually open, or is it closed, or is it in progress? You get to see all of that in the incident dashboard. You can also get to see things like the age of a particular incident. So how long has this incident been open for? Is it something that is getting to, you know, something that is going out of scope? Is it something that's a very, very old incident and it's not have, it's, it doesn't have a resolution yet? So you can get to see things of this sort when you actually configure an incident rule and you take a look at the incident uh, dashboard. Now, then you have step number four, right? 
So this is where the security analyst, so this is supposed to represent a security analyst, in case you couldn't figure that out. So what I'm trying to say here is, apart from all of this, when you're configuring an incident rule, you can also assign technicians. You can assign your technicians automatically. So whenever an incident is of a particular kind, you can automatically assign the security analyst. So that is one thing. The second thing that you can do is, you can also manage tickets efficiently. And what is the meaning of this? Well, you, can, you may be using a lot of ticketing tools like Manage Engine, Service Desk Plus, Service Now. You could be using BMC Remedy, Jira. So an effective SIM solution should be able to connect to these ticketing tools, should be able to se send your alert over into those tools, and then your IT administrator can actually manage the incident right from that tool itself take it to its logical conclusion, bring closure to it. So that's what automated incident response is all about. So yeah, this is what I wanted to cover in today's episode. Thank you so much for listening to me. And until next time, please take care.